make this opening speech at uh, this session of uh, Golf Information Security Expo and Conference, JISEC, the 10th edition taking place here in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Secondly, I'm also delighted that this session focuses more on Africa as a continent. And as far as I'm concerned, Africa is the most important continent in the world today. Because if you look at so many statistics, you will clearly agree with what I have said. Particularly, our population, we are the second most populous continent after Asia, with a population of around 1.3 billion people. Secondly, our diversification. It is the most diverse continent. Number three, also look at the countries within the continent. We have the highest number of countries with 54, while Asia 48, Europe 44, South America 33, 4 more, each, it is the most youngest continent. For example, Nigeria, the average age in Nigeria today is 18.4 years old. So Africa is the youngest continent globally today. And finally, look at the opportunities we have. We have so many untapped opportunities in Africa, more than any other continent. However, one will strongly agree with all these arguments when he visits Africa and sees the opportunities. It is because of this I am glad that this session focuses more on discussing Africa, digitalization, and most importantly, cybersecurity. Keeping cybersecurity at the forefront of digital business. As we all know, cybersecurity is not just a standalone course. It's not just a standalone field, but rather it is a domain that is part and parcel of digital transformation or digital economy. And this is very important indeed because if you look at all statistics, you will agree that we need we have a lot to do in Africa when it comes to addressing the challenges of our criminality and the many more. Let us take, take some examples. For example, when it comes to access, cyber uh, physical criminals, mostly they need physical access before they commit crime. Cyber criminals do not need any access mostly. He will sit in one part of the world, another continent, and commit crime in another continent. To the speed itself. If you compare the speed, you will discover that Physical criminality takes time because sometimes it requires you to move from one point to another. But cyber crime doesn't respect that. Number three, the scale. The scale is another issue. For example, when it comes to the scale, for a cyber physical criminal to loot an entire library that you can say most probably the volume is around 20 gigabyte is something that is difficult. But in cyber crime, that volume doesn't matter. Even if it is in terabyte or exabyte, or as the case may be, within no time, that can be looted easily. And it is the same with jurisdiction. Physical crime restricted to national laws or local laws. But you can only be successful in addressing cyber crime by using international laws because the criminality doesn't respect your own local borders within your own country. So these are some of the issues that make cyber crime more challenging than physical crime. Furthermore, the digitalization that is taking place today in the world, we will understand that the more we increase our digitalization agenda, the more cyber criminality increases as it is today because of a COVID-19 pandemic, most of us have moved online. We conduct most of our activities online. 
to the extent that even after this COVID-19, it is difficult to go back to where we were before because of uh, the way we have embraced digitalization, doing online lectures, attending virtual meetings, and uh, many more. So even if COVID-19 is completely over, there are certain things that we will not go back to the normal because the new normal today is the online activities and the virtual activities. And it is because of this, there is need for us to put more effort in place in order to address the challenge of our cyber crime and ensure national collaboration is key. You cannot just have your own center and feel that that is sufficient, you don't need anybody. That is almost impossible. There is need to share information, intelligence, and many more. This is also another very important key. Because if you say you are alone, many things will be compromised without your knowledge. It is necessary that you identify some countries, some international institutions, private sector who have expertise. You partner with them, you collaborate with them, and you share information. Sometimes they help you in advance, and sometimes you help them. So that partnership and collaboration is key. Our research has also indicated in Africa, with the growing digitalization, we have a shortfall of more than 100,000 people in the area of cyber security and information security over 100,000. So this shows to us that we need to train many more in that regard and it is very important and it will also be a key to our success in whatever we do. Digitalization agenda has come to stay. You cannot live in isolation of the digital world. The entire fourth industrial revolution is about the creation of a virtual world which is an independent world. Today, we have a physical world, we have a biological world, and we have another world that has been created by the fourth industrial revolution. And that world is our virtual world. That virtual world, whether you are ready or not, you cannot live in isolation. Since we cannot live in isolation, we must get ready for that journey. You cannot be successful in that journey without making and keeping cyber security at the forefront. By doing that, you will embark on the journey and you will also be very successful in that journey. And I do hope that our experts to make presentation in the panel and many more will discuss this extensively and guide us. And uh, finally, I also publish a book that is not yet ready in the market to guide our developing countries the book has been entitled A Cyber Security Initiatives for Securing a Country. This framework I discuss superficially has been discussed extensively in that book. And I do hope this opening address will be useful to our experts in the panel and other presenters to expand more and guide the world, particularly our continent, that is the African continent, the largest continent when it comes to the total number of the countries with so many opportunities. Thank you very much for listening.